If you spotted the zephyr trawling off the coast of Washington state, you might think this is one of the many fishing vessels in the area. It's going to be enough for five hooks. But this is not your ordinary fishing trip. There you go. Get a good fight. It's a pretty fish. This must get hard to do if it's very like rough conditions, right? And yeah. They're rocking all over the place. Right. It gets tricky when the weather gets rougher. It's a really, really nice calm day for surgery today. Salmon surgery, that is. This team of U.S. government scientists is tagging Chinook, but this is not just about the salmon. That's because the salmon are the main prey for the endangered southern resident killer whales. These orcas only hunt for fish. Certainly there's been a tremendous interest in the United States and in Canada as well in uh, the plight of the southern resident killer whales. And I think it really has raised awareness of what might be happening out in the ocean. On board the boat, once the salmon are caught, they're put in a mixture of clove oil and water, which acts as an anesthetic. They're then cut open. An acoustic tag is inserted into their abdomen. Afterwards, they're stitched back up and then moved in to the recovery unit, basically a cooler with ocean water. You can see he's already waking up. It'll just be another minute or so and he'll be upright and, and looking feisty and then we'll let him recover a little bit longer and, and release him. The tags communicate with receivers that have been placed in the ocean. 560. This crew is hoping to tag 300 juvenile Chinook. And similar work is going on off the coast of Vancouver Island where researchers with the University of British Columbia are tagging 100 adult salmon. It's all part of an effort to track the dwindling populations. If we understand the movement of the prey and behavior of the prey, we can understand more about what the killer whales have to do in order to find those prey and where they might be going and spending their time. A pod of southern residents was spotted near Tofino, BC at the end of May, and scientists were overjoyed when a new calf was swimming alongside them. Just last year, another image caused dismay. This mother carried around her dead calf for 17 days in an apparent act of grief. They're normally here throughout June, but they aren't around this year. Wow, aren't these guys beautiful? So, so it's the transient killer whales that have been delighting tourists in the waters between Vancouver and Victoria. They're a different type of orca. What a nice big line of whales. They're thriving because unlike the resident orcas, oh, 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 a whole group of them, oh. They will happily munch on one of the many seals in the area. By now, I am quite sure that they have had something to eat. Marine naturalist Joan Lopez explains to those on board this whale watching boat why they're not likely to see the endangered orcas this time of year. I usually tell them that they just haven't been seen in the area for a long time and we believe that is because there currently aren't enough Chinook salmon returning to the river area so they have to be somewhere else to get food. If it's got kids to feed, when you've got youngsters, you better go where there's food in the cupboard. Because there have been so few sightings of them, it's meant that researchers who've been tracking the southern residents for years had to delay their studies this season. So the dog is at the front of the boat? Deborah Giles has spent the last 10 summers in a boat on the Salish Sea. She's part of a team that has trained dogs to sniff out, well, whale poop. And she recalls one of her best finds. And it was just a beautiful sample, huge and fatty rich. It was gorgeous. Not too, many people, to not too many people describe fecal <laughs> samples that way, but <laughs> That's true. I get that you're passionate but, about but it. But after you know the kind of information that you can get from a sample like that, it's like gold. It really is like gold. She and a team analyzed the fecal samples to learn about the whale's health. They can tell whether they were pregnant and if they're getting proper nutrition. The whales are in a famine and deeper famine. These whales are not getting enough to eat at any time in the year. This spring, the federal government put in place more restrictions to limit commercial and recreational fishing in B.C. More than 100 gathered to protest, calling the move political. But Giles completely disagrees. I've heard things like, well, they're eating our fish. 
And my reply to them is, no, actually, technically, we're eating their fish. They were here first. They evolved hundreds of thousands of years ago to eat Chinook salmon. We're the ones that are eating their fish. Back on the Zephyr, scientists are hoping the tagging projects give them a sense of the Chinook's behavior, how deep they travel and where they go. They hope the data can help shape future policy when it comes to protecting the Chinook. I think some populations of, of uh, salmon are really at risk. I do worry, you know, 20 years from now, what populations will still be around and which ones won't. There he goes. And he worries what the Chinook's fate will mean for the orcas whose survival depends on them. Briar Stewart, CBC News, off the coast of Washington State.